Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. As ever, please know this video isn't a sinful attack, but rather a biblical critique. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Rick Warren. Rick is the pastor of Saddleback Church in Orange County, California, and he's also the author of the wildly popular book, The Purpose Driven Life. Now, Rick Warren is not usually someone who people would identify instantly as a false teacher. If you get a crowd of relatively discerning evangelical Christians and ask them what they think of, say, Joel Osteen, they'll probably tell you that he's clearly a false teacher. But if you ask the exact same group of people to tell you what they think of Rick Warren, most of them, I would assume, would either be positive or neutral. Only a small minority would be able to easily identify him as someone spreading falsehood and error in the church. But the fact remains, Rick Warren is a false teacher, make no mistake about it. Last year, Rick openly rejected the standard of God's word regarding gender roles in the church. He publicly announced that he would be ordaining three female pastors at his church. 1 Timothy 2.12 strictly forbids this, saying, quote, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man, end quote. Many will respond to this by declaring that Paul's command here is cultural. It was only intended for that time and place. But this is plainly untrue. Just a few verses later, in verse 13, Paul says this, quote, For Adam was formed first, then Eve, end quote. So you see, his command was not rooted in a particular time, place, or culture. No, his argument is rooted in creation, in the original purposes, the original designs that God made men and women with. Any attempt, then, to appoint female pastors is a violation of God's created order and of his clear written word. But enter Rick Warren, because Rick, like all false teachers, thinks that there is a better approach than the biblical one. A softer approach, one that appeases the culture. In today's video, we're going to refute Rick Warren's arguments in favor of female pastors piece by piece. Let's start by watching this first clip. Tonight is a historic night. We're going to ordain our first three women pastors. along with our new CR leader and along with three new elders. But we don't do anything without a biblical basis. So uh, I'm going to run through this really quickly. You know that I'm going to speed through this when I have already filled in the blanks on some of it. So Rick Warren says that Saddleback are appointing female pastors, but don't worry, because they don't do anything without a, quote, biblical basis. This is a classic bait and switch. It's a distraction. The idea here in the clip is that if they can quote some scripture to you that seems to defend their position of ordaining female pastors, then they must be doing it with a biblical basis. The problem is that all this demonstrates in this specific case is that they have the ability to take scripture out of context and use it to accomplish their goal. They can use scripture, they can use a biblical principle to deny and negate some other biblical principle. 1 Timothy 1.8 says, quote, Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. End quote. So you see, the law of God, as offered to us in Holy Scripture, is good if you use it well. In other words, the Word of God is good, but you must use it according to the standard of the Word of God. You cannot use God's Word to accomplish goals that the Word of God is against. This is certainly the case in this particular situation. So pay attention. Just because someone talks about scripture or quotes a Bible verse doesn't mean they're using it properly or biblically. So study the verses I quote. Study the verses that Rick quotes. Be diligent. Don't take someone's word for it just because they may seem nice. Many false teachers do. This brings us to the next clip. Watch this. We don't base our practices on popular opinion or what culture tells us to do. Doesn't really matter what any other church does, what any other organization does. We don't the Bible says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. The Bible says do not copy or conform to the pattern of this world. So here Rick says that they don't come to these conclusions at his church, the ones of putting up female pastors. They don't come to these conclusions out of popular opinion. That's not the standard, according to Rick, and I would agree with his point. But unfortunately, I don't think that he agrees with his point, because he says that they don't come to this conclusion out of popular opinion, and yet, after 41 years of running Saddleback Church, all of a sudden, Rick Warren has decided to appoint female pastors, when having female pastors is now extremely popular. 
So if you are not making decisions out of popular opinion, you can see why it's confusing then when your decisions on this are totally aligned with public opinion. This is one of the many inherent contradictions in his presentation. I agree with the passage Rick quoted. Yes, 1 Corinthians 3.19 does say, quote, The wisdom of this world is folly with God. This is exactly why Rick Warren is wrong here, because he's following the feminist wisdom of the world instead of the clear creational order of the Word of God. So let's go ahead and watch this next clip here. We don't base our practices on man-made traditions. Okay? Jesus said, it's useless to worship me if you replace what God commands with your own made-up rules. Matthew 15, 9. So here Rick says that they don't base their practices in, quote, man-made traditions. But then the passage he quotes is Matthew 15, 9, which is precisely the passage that proves his position is wrong. Jesus says, quote, in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men, end quote. So we have the doctrine of God, and then we have the commandment of men being taught falsely as doctrine. Let's see here. Paul in Scripture, 1 Timothy 2.12, gives us the doctrine of God on this issue of female pastors, namely, that this is forbidden in the church. That's the doctrine of God on this issue. But Rick Warren says that actually women can be pastors and can be teachers, but that would be a commandment of men being taught over and against the doctrines of God. So Rick Warren is quoting a passage saying that we shouldn't teach man-made ideas as Christian doctrine, but he quotes it while he is literally in the process of teaching his man-made ideas as Christian doctrine. But he saves the bulk of his claims for the end, and this is a bit longer, but you gotta bear with us here. Watch this. Pastor is not simply an office in a church. It's a gift. In fact, the Bible says this. Christ, who is the one who gave us these gifts to the church, he has given us apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, and their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work. This is old news to you. The people are the ministers, the pastors are the administrators. It's not my job to do the ministry. It's not, not if you're in staff, it's not your job to do the ministry. It's your job to make sure that one day everybody stands for God. And when Jesus says, what did you do with what I gave you? You'll know what to say. So effectively, the argument here is that Christ is the one who gave gifts to the church. That's true. Teaching and pastoring are two of those gifts. That's also true. Therefore, God can give women this gift, and they can use it as pastors. That's not true. Not only is this extremely confusing, but it actually doesn't prove his point at all. First off, the passage he quotes, Ephesians 4.11, does say, quote, And he, Christ, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers. End quote. This passage demonstrates that Christ gave the church leaders and shepherds, and that we should humbly be thanking the Lord for all of the godly people he has appointed to lead us. That's all true. But this passage does not tell us whether or not women are in that group that Jesus appointed as pastors, or if they're allowed to be pastors. That's an assumption that he's reading into the text. I could use this exact same line of logic with Rick Warren's standard to make the case that my dog can be a pastor. Genesis 1.1 says, quote, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This means that God creates everything, which includes dogs. But wait, it also means that God created the office of pastor. Therefore, biblically, my dog can be a pastor. Do you see how this logic works, or at least how it doesn't work? If you want to prove that women can be qualified as pastors, then you need to use a text that either directly or indirectly talks about the qualifications of a pastor. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 Timothy 3.2 discusses the qualifications of a pastor when it says that he must be, quote, the husband of one wife. Titus 1.6 gives pastoral qualifications as well, saying that a pastor must be, quote, the husband of one wife, and his children are believers, end quote. So when Rick Warren is trying to prove a point biblically about pastoral qualifications and gender, why doesn't he use a passage that actually talks about pastoral qualifications and gender? And the answer shouldn't surprise you. It's that every passage that clearly deals with this subject specifically demonstrates that his position is false. And that's why we can say that Rick Warren is a false teacher. God tells us that only men should be pastors. The culture tells us that that's sexist and wrong and evil. But instead of siding with God, Rick Warren and countless others have sided with the culture. 
Instead, we should say what Romans 3, 4 says, quote, Let God be true, though every man be a liar, end quote. And please know this, I do not offer any of this correction from a high and mighty position. I am nothing but a wretched sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's pray for Rick, that he would stop this by God's grace and turn to the truth of God's word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please give us a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any content. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel as well, just in case YouTube ever takes us down. The link is in the description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of the free content you see on this channel possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Lynn S. If you also want to help and become part of the solution today, hit the link in the description. Every little bit keeps us independent and helps us immensely here on the channel. So I hope you'll consider joining the Truth Army today. And until next time, fight for truth, never surrender, and keep your eyes open. Thank you, and God bless.